tried to dispel a myth about full wave dipoles. And people can be forgiven for believing that they simply uh, shite antennas and can't radiate when there are websites like this. Tutorials point. Antenna theory full wave dipole. Now I'll just jump down. <laughs> it actually says here. The voltage pattern when induces its positive charges and negative charges at the same time cancel out each other as shown in the figure. The induced charges make no further attempt of radiation since they are cancelled. The output radiation will be zero for a full wave transmission dipole. Now let me just say... That is the biggest load of verbal diarrhea I have ever, ever read. So here's a thought experiment. <clears throat> N-fed half-wave antennas are very popular, okay? So imagine this, forget this side for now, imagine this is the feed end of an N-fed wire that is a half-wave long on a given band, right? Now we know that it's a high impedance antenna because it's a half wave long, okay, so it has the high voltages at the ends, okay, and the high current in the middle, just like a Cenefed half wave does. In summary, it behaves the same, but where we're feeding from makes it a high impedance antenna. So an NFED half wave exhibits nearly an infinite feed point impedance, okay? Now, uh, whereas a Cenefed dipole, of course, exhibits a low impedance because it's not feeding where the voltages are high. Now, if you were uh, imaginative and thought, I want to get a little bit more gain and I've got more space. So instead of one N-fed half wave, imagine you've got it running horizontally and you've got your coax feed into it. I want to have another one beside it working in perfect phase with it. So as the currents are going this way and this way, it's happening on both. So it's like a double size big antenna, but with coherent um, you know, transitions of the flow of current, which of course then creates the coherent rotating <laughs> H fields around the antenna all simultaneously, okay, and creates a transverse electromagnetic wave. So you could have your coax and your, you know, your um, 49 to 1, whatever you're using to step up the voltage impedance um, at this one, and you could run to this one. And if they're running in perfect phase, that's fine, right? We've got uh, boom, 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 all running together. Now, the thing is, you can achieve that in a different way. <laughs> and it's called the center-fed full wave that actually is a very good antenna. The problem, of course, with the center-fed full wave is it's like two N-fed half waves. And it's that both elements have a high impedance. So, first of all, you could, of course, make up a step-up transformer, like a ballon, but um, literally make you know, a transformer, you could make one up that actually has, is a balanced output that's also a step-up that feeds both of these out of phase. And then, of course, you know that if when it's delivering current here, it's taking current from here, so we have the same coherence of, of the flow of current, for example, right? So... What I've done recently, and there's other ways to do it, is to, um, to solve the problem of the near infinite impedance is to use a quarter wave of a, a ladder line, balance line, open wire, whatever you want to call it, or a window line of a, of a different impedance than the radio and the coax, which is 50 ohm. And you have to make your balance line one quarter wave. Of course, you have to factor in the velocity factor. So like my window line... Is, uh, it's a 450 on window line that I was using, and it's a 91% velocity factor. So you work out your quarter wave in free space, and then you times that by 0.91. And then you've got the length that you need for your balance line. In my case, though, you could use a one-to-one -one current balance or some sort of choke. In my case, I've quite simply tethered the coax to the quarter wave um, balanced uh, line. Uh, I know that coax isn't balanced, but in my, and uh, my previous video will show um, the, the results anyway, there's hardly any common mode currents, but um, 
the action <laughs> of this line itself being capacitive when when a current is going this way induces a counter current on the other wire and so on and so forth so we um this does the balancing pretty much right in in a reasonable situation along with the elements and you can then run to uh, whatever length of 50 ohm coax to your transceiver and you may need a tuner like in my case my first draft it's about 2.5 to 1 SWR so I needed a tuner but that's minor it's not so bad tuning in a low match but if you were running coax all the way to a uh, center fed full wave and then uh, trying to use your tuner at the station that's where you where this type of antenna becomes ineffectual because you're getting 100% reflection and you're having to tune that back but each time this is a tran transition along a lossy line whereas you've got this it's low loss line but not only that, this um, a quarter wave transmission line inverts, if there's an impedance mismatch to the rest of the line, it inverts the impedance. So a an, near an infinite impedance becomes an extremely low impedance a quarter wave later. If I made this ladder line a half wave long, then it would show exactly what is here. But when it's a quarter wave, it inverts that impedance. So near infinite, uh, very low impedance down here, which makes it a good match then for the coax, and for the radio to tune on the coax without too many losses. Now, uh, what you have to think about, like I was saying about the two end-fed half waves, well, it is like feeding this one coming along that way and this one that way in phase, because we're feeding here and here out of phase. And as you know, if we've got currents coming up here and down here, then that equates to currents going that way here and this way here. So, in an alternating manner, we have current flow coherently in one direction and then current flow coherently in the other direction. We do have a resonant full wave. The only issue is, is where we're feeding it presents an extremely high impedance. And this is why there's this common misconception that they don't work because so many people think you can just use coax and completely ignore impedance matching. So, a centerfed full wave dipole, when properly matched, is actually um, an antenna with gain over a half wave dipole, probably about 2 dB. So, um, yeah, give one a try. You could, of course, you could make up your own transformer. It wouldn't be that hard as a step up transformer. Let's say you've got a toroid, you, you choose. Um, this is a bit um, messy because the paper's moving. So, just for example, I mean, this is not, not an actual design, but just giving you an idea. So, if this is your AC source, you know, your radio signal coming to your uh, from your radio and you, this is going to be your ballon because it won't be an anon if it's running a centerfed dipole it'll be a ballon so we've got the arm balance side so let's say you've got the active and the coax shield and let's say your active takes three turns let's say just for example three turns and comes back to ground okay as the primary but if you tap a wire from the ground side and run that across let's say and then have that be a center tap for a winding going this way and a winding going this way. And the thing is making sure that, let's say, see this wire here, this is one end. It's coming in and under and then out and around. We've got it round and round and around. It connects to this wire, but it must keep doing that same round and round and round all the way. Because that means, you know, when the magnetic field's induced and it drives a current, it's, let's say, for this one, it, let's say, pulling it under the toroid. If this is getting current pulled in under, then this one's got current coming out and over because of that rotation right and um, so now uh, this example here there's three turns on the primary and the six turns per side on the secondary so it's probably difficult to argue on whether it's actually a one to two or a one to four uh, in the voltage side and a, um, so and yeah if it's a one to two then it's a four to one in the um, impedance side and so on but anyway but just the basic idea, you can create a balanced output step-up transformer. And if you needed uh, more, you know, higher uh, impedance, then just more turns on the secondaries. And make sure you've got a suitable toroid for it. So, I mean, that's another way of doing it. Um, but I do think the um, uh, quarter wave way is very good too. The only issue here is it is pretty much single-banded. Well, dual-banded, 7.3.